Hi there, I'm James and in today's video I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to get started on YouTube. Now normally I put a little graphic in here but I'm going to go straight into the detail. And something I've noticed about beginner's guides on YouTube is that they're always made, or the vast majority of them are made, by people with hundreds of thousands if not millions of subscribers. They're not made by people who are still at the bottom of that process and are still learning and coming up. And I think what happens is that these people with the hundreds of thousands and their millions of subscribers have got all the kit they need, they've got a massive budget, they've always got those nice pretty lights behind them, they're in a studio, and it doesn't represent a classic beginner scenario where they're just at home wondering, I've got an idea for a video, how do I make my first YouTube video? So that's what this is all about. This is gonna be part one. We're gonna talk about the equipment that I use, some of the mistakes I've made, and hopefully give you some great advice about what you'll need to get started on your YouTube journey. So without any delay, let's talk about some of this kit. So the absolute first thing you're going to need to make a YouTube video is some way of recording yourself. And again, as some of those previous videos, instruction videos talk about, they talk about cameras, uh, fixed lenses, video cameras, all of that kind of stuff. None of that is actually required because I've shot all 77 of my previous YouTube videos on a mobile phone. Behind the tripod that I'm recording myself on now is a Samsung S22. It's not even their current flagship device. And I started way back when using something, I think a Samsung S20 Fans Edition. So absolutely not flagship phones. These are just fairly mid-market phones, but the quality on them is superb. Hopefully you can tell that. As I've grown in my YouTube journey, I've started researching having another camera. It gets a bit frustrating when you're recording on a mobile phone. If, for example, you get a phone call or you get notifications from your email or WhatsApp and it pings off in the background. But we can manage that. It's certainly in the early stages of your YouTube journey, use your phone because it's a, you've already, everyone's got a phone. There's no investment required and you can see if you like YouTube. Because if you've gone out and bought a camera, you've done 10 videos and you decide it's not for you, you've got a camera that you now need to sell. So number one, camera, and in my case, use a mobile phone. Number two, second most important accessory, and certainly most important if, like me, you film on your own, is a tripod. I've got one here from my previous hobby of kind of taking photos with a regular SLR. This one's a Giotos, I think. And then what I needed to uh, adapt that, that's probably 15 years old, is I needed a specific phone mount that mounts the camera in, um, so you can add that onto the, it's not the hot shoe, is it? It's the, the mount. And that just clamps the camera like that. And this one has a, a cold shoe, I believe it's called, mount for a microphone to go on. So in terms of those, the two most important things, some way of filming yourself, in my case, a mobile phone, and secondly, a tripod to hold that mobile phone still using a specific mobile phone mount so that you can talk to the camera and use your hands and you're not doing this thing, which I know people do where they hold it out on a, on a stick or something. And that's exactly what I've used this mini mount for is to kind of vlog myself. But my content isn't really vlogging content. It's a bit more static, but I could have done this if I'd wanted to. The second thing that I really want to impress upon you that's important when filming YouTube is sound quality. The thing that makes your videos or makes any videos seem more professional than perhaps they are is the quality of the sound. Some of my first videos I recorded without a microphone. There was just, I was just using the microphone inside the camera, uh, inside the mobile phone, should I say. And in a room like this, which is very echoey, you pick up, it sounds terrible, basically. So the first thing I did was I went out and I bought something called a lavalier or a lapel microphone. It looks exactly like you've seen people wear on TV. It's, they're typically 10 to 15 pounds here in the UK on Amazon. They're not remotely expensive. And it worked really well for another 10 or 15 videos. The problem with this system is that particularly in my case where I'm filming on a phone that's this far away from me, and this is probably two meters, I've got three meters of cable here, and you're constantly trying to swoosh around a cable, and it, it gets a bit frustrating. You, you end up pulling the phone off the tripod and all sorts of things. So I very quickly upgraded myself to one of these. This is a, a, a wireless microphone set up by Rode, or Ro, how you say it? Um, and I find that's what we're, I'm talking to you on now, that works really well. There's a receiver plugged into the back of the phone that's on the tripod, where that's behind, on the phone on the tripod now, 
and then there's a little uh, transmitter here that I clip on uh, to whatever piece of clothing I'm wearing at the time. I want to give you a demonstration about how bad it sounds without this. So if I keep talking and I come to the camera and I disconnect it, and now you'll get to hear what this room really sounds like without a microphone. It's echoey, it's, yeah, it's, it's horrible. So the thing I like to do is obviously plug this in and keep recording. And hopefully that gives you a demonstration of the importance of sound quality and why a microphone, whether that be a wired one or a wireless one, is going to be a super important thing that you buy right at the very beginning of the process of filming YouTube. Absolutely don't spend your money on a, on a fancy pants camera for your first YouTube video. Do spend £15 on a lapel microphone or maybe if you're super certain that you're going to carry on £50, £60 on a wireless microphone set up so that you get that sound quality or speech quality when you're filming. Staying with microphones then, as well as the lapel or lavalier microphones that I just talked through, I also went out and purchased this sort of standard omnidirectional, is it a boom microphone? I'm not sure. Um, the idea being is that it would just sit on top of the mobile phone carrier um, like this onto that cold shoe that we talked about and, and actually um, would just serve for if you're moving around. And I use this a bit when I was doing some of the work on some of the cars where I'm, I'm moving around and you need to listen to what the engine might be doing or if you're trying to pick up the audio from the brakes. What I've found though is that um, actually even though I'm only two meters away from the mobile phone doing the recording right now, it still picks up far too much of the room sound. And this uh, microphone that's just here um, picks up my voice and very little of the room sound and makes it, the video sound quality just that little bit better. This does, I mean, it's a lovely bit of kit. Funnily enough, it's really nicely made. It's come with this fuzzy thing. I think they call it a dead cat that you use when you're outside to stop the wind noise. And I will keep it, but it, it rarely gets used. There's a, there's a very specific use case for that kind of microphone. The kind of filming I do doesn't require that kind of microphone. That's the conclusion I've come to. If I had my time again, I probably wouldn't buy it, but because it's nice, I'm gonna keep it. The other thing, final piece on microphones, I had purchased um, a desktop microphone for plugging into the PC to record voiceover while doing editing. I don't do a great deal of voiceover. There are some YouTubers out there who basically film everything in silence and then uh, talk over everything as a, at a, as a voiceover in edit. I don't do that. So I had this microphone and it was a really, again, a really nice bit of kit. It plugged in nicely, USB-C, nice and simple. I've actually sold it, listed it on eBay last week, sold it yesterday, it's shipped out today. So I took a quick bit of video of it this morning. And as you can see, as I'm doing a little walk around here, it's got a tripod, it's got a pop filter. It's a nice piece of kit. But because I don't do a great deal of voiceover, I don't really need the quality that that gives me because I find using a headset like this gives me as almost as much quality and a great deal more convenience. Now, this isn't um, a cheap set of headphones. This is made by Logitech. I mean, they're not terribly expensive, 25, 30 pounds maybe. Um, but the quality of the microphone off this is actually really good. Not as good as that uh, desktop mounted one, but good enough for what I need it. And again, if I had my time and I was doing it from the beginning, I wouldn't go to the trouble of buying a dedicated voiceover mic. I'd just use a nice headset like this. And you also get the benefit that it is a pair of headphones, which you can use when you're editing as well. In conclusion then, for beginning on YouTube, my recommendations are that you buy yourself a lapel or lavalier microphone, whether that be wired or wireless, and you buy yourself a headset from a decent brand in order to be able to use that for voiceover and to listen to you while you're editing. Everything else that I've bought, I don't either need and I've sold or I've upgraded from, or in the case of this microphone, I'm keeping for the very occasional times when I'm gonna need it if I'm doing a specific job where I need to pick up ambient sound or in-room sound. Microphone's done. Let's move on to our third and final section. So our third section then is about lighting. And one of the things I've noticed about those videos helping beginners get started on YouTube is that the content creators giving that content are in a lovely well-lit studio, often with some super cool funky backlighting in those purple lights and so on. Everything's sort of slightly out of focus beyond, that, uh, beyond where they are because they're using an expensive camera. And again, as I've said before, that doesn't represent a beginner's journey. 
So the first thing to say is if you're using even a mid-range mobile phone and the camera quality now of our mobile phones is so good that they work brilliantly in low light levels. It's actually quite overcast right now, quite helpfully actually for the purposes of what I'm about to demonstrate. And as you can see, you can still perfectly pick up everything that's going on in terms of me and what I'm doing with the camera. However, I have invested a small amount of money in a, in a ring light. So I've got one of these. Um, as you can see, it's projecting a bit of light on me. These are brilliant if you're going to be doing YouTube where you're doing kind of makeup tutorials or something like that because they're these ring that shines in your face. There's hundreds of different types available on Amazon. Again, they're very inexpensive. This one's by a brand called HP, I think. I did a review of it at the time. It's one of, one of my least watched videos ever, I think. Um, but actually, I find it's really good. It's, it's light and it's portable. It's got its own integrated stand. So instead of having to buy a dedicated tripod for a light, you can just twist it out like this and then you can sort of lock it off and then prop it up and then you can angle it down it does these sort of things so you in my case when i'm doing some of that fine detail work on which typically takes place here it lights it up nicely what i find though is that it's it, it really it drains battery quite quickly and actually if you've got some decent daylight you really don't need it yeah, of course good lighting makes something look better but let's think about this in terms of we start your you me we're starting our YouTube journey and we don't want barriers to entry because we think we need to spend a fortune on equipment. Again, I think this light was 20, 25 pounds, something like that. I already had a battery pack that I, uh, in, in stock, uh, that I used to run it. So there's very little cost associated with it. You've also got, in this particular case, you've got the ability to change the color temperature. That's cold and blue. That's kind of warm and, and kind of beigey and that's more of a natural white light. I suppose my conclusion is that I find it helpful to have one of these. I'm actually thinking now of getting a second one, a square box one, more for lighting up when I'm working in the garage because the lighting in the garage is very, I'm, I'm deep into a double garage. I'm not getting a lot of natural daylight and it would be useful to be able to light up under the bonnet of the car if that's where I'm working. But actually for most of the time, something like this is absolutely more than adequate. Do not be concerned that you can't afford two, three hundred pounds, dollars on some exciting studio lighting because I just don't think they're required. So in summary, here is what I think is, is the absolute bare minimum essentials that you need to get started on YouTube. And if you're beginning and it's, you're not sure if you're going to be comfortable standing behind the camera and so on, what you don't want to be doing is investing loads of money and then deciding it's not for you. So let me just run through it. Tripod, doesn't need to be a super expensive one. The one holding the camera right now, I won in a Christmas raffle about five years ago. I think it's about 20 pounds. I have two, I have this posh one, I have that cheap one. The cheap one is just as adequate for the, the job I'm using it for right here. Next then is, uh, continuing our sort of emphasis on sound quality, is definitely, definitely do the lapel microphone. Again, this is the wired one. It's absolutely good enough. It is a little bit frustrating having the wire, but it's far, far better than using the microphone built into the phone. Another key thing then is how do you hold the phone stable on your tripod? You use one of these um, phone holding clips, I think again, about 15 pounds. So currently we're at 15, 15, we're at 50 pounds. Finally then when you're doing editing and you want to be able to listen and talk, do voiceover, a decent set of, uh, a decent headset like this Logitech one, let's say it's 20 pounds. So we're at 50, we're at 70 pounds. Then I think there's the opportunity to do some optional upgrades. The ring light is an optional upgrade. As I say, if you're filming on a bright sunny day with good natural daylight, you don't need it, but it is useful if you're filming when it's a little darker or you're doing some really close up work over a desk or a worktop like this, 25 pounds. So we're at 95 pounds. And then if you really wanna push the boat out, you could swap out your 15 pound wired lapel microphone for uh, a wireless system. A Rode system like the one I have, I think mine, because it's only the single transmitter was 150, 160. I think the double one that they now do is, is it's on a prime deal actually, I, I saw earlier, 180, 190 pounds. But if you go away from some of the more established brands, 
I've seen their um, um, wireless microphone for use with mobile phones on Amazon is about £35. So I'll put a link for that in the description. So for approximately £100 to £120, you can have everything you need to be competent and start well on YouTube with your tripod and your microphone and your stand and your light and so on. And I think the, the problem in the past has always been that the expectation is that you need a £500 camera and £300 lights and lots of expensive microphones and you don't. And, and I am the proof of that because this is the kit I use. And as I mentioned previously, I've done 77 videos. This will be my 78th. So I hope you find that useful. Please send me some feedback if you're thinking of beginning on YouTube. I'm, I didn't have anyone I could ask questions of. I just had to sort of find it all out for myself. I'm very happy to help. Send me some questions and I can respond. And then coming up in part two, I'm going to be start talking about kind of ideas for content and looking at video editing and a big mistake that I made with my first video and my first bit of editing and why it took me so long from starting my channel in June of 2020 to getting my first video live in November 2020, five months. Until then though, thanks ever so much for watching and I look forward to coming to you in the next video very soon. Thanks and goodbye.